This is a Tracking the Tropics update with a certified most accurate weather team at First Coast News. Good evening, folks. I'm meteorologist Ross Mumon. Our uh, APM advisory just came out from the National Hurricane Center with regards to Hurricane Milton still a category of five storm, but really just a beast now continuing to move off to the northeast of Cancun and the Yucatan there on uh, infrared satellite imagery here this evening. Just 440 miles to the southwest of Tampa Bay uh, as we speak right now. Sustained winds of 165 miles per hour. Still a category five storm. So uh, Milton did weaken gradually or just slightly earlier today as it went through eye wall replacement uh, and kind of went through that entire cycle, but has quickly re-strengthened again, moving off to the east northeast about 10 miles per hour. Just reading these numbers off the screen. The pressure has also uh, kind of fluctuated back and forth as it weakened. That pressure jumped back up uh, into about the low 900 millibar range now at 902. So again, still staying very strong, but we are expecting it to gradually weaken just slightly as it continues to move off to the northeast here over about the next 24 to 36 hours, um, really because of uh, a multitude of factors. One, there's going to be wind shear to the north, so that's going to gradually break it up a little bit. Wind shear is good for us, not so much for the hurricane, so not going to be nearly as healthy of a storm, but nonetheless still will likely make landfall um, either right around Tampa Bay or slightly just to the south of there. We've been looking for model trends, and we'll discuss this here in a second, of where uh, it could potentially make landfall. It kind of has a windshield wiper effect. Some models uh, take it a little bit further north one run. The next run, they'll bring it further south. So it kind of goes back and forth. So really what you want to look for is that consistency, that trend over three, four, even five model runs in a row where is that trend of the track potentially going to be? But uh, latest from the National Hurricane Center, as of 8 p.m. tonight, likely going to make landfall either around Tampa or just potentially to the south of there near the Sarasota area uh, shortly after midnight tomorrow night. So we're likely going to be talking about 12 a.m. to maybe 3 a.m. So midnight to 3 a.m., probably about a three-hour window uh, for when this storm could make landfall. It is um, a little bit slower. The timing has backed up just a hair uh, than what we kind of expected. But overall, the forecast still on track, still on par. We're only going to see really minor tweaks and changes here over the next couple of hours or really over about the next day. But here's the latest look at some of those spaghetti models and plots in as well here from uh, earlier this evening. So you can see only just one or two of those takes it much closer to I-4. The overall trend is just to the south paralleling the I-4 corridor, but likely taking this storm or at least the eye just to the south of Tampa and also just to the south of Orlando. But nonetheless, uh, a lot of these watches and warnings haven't been in effect all day here today. Hurricane warning in effect for St. John's, Putnam, and Flagler counties, and then continuing southward down towards Daytona Beach, Tampa, Orlando. Uh, tropical storm warning for Glen and Camden counties, and a tropical storm watch then um, for Folkestone up into the Okie, Finocchi's, and then west um, out towards the I-75 corridor, really north of Gainesville up towards Lake City. Um, Sanderson, Keystone Heights Union, Bradford counties, you are just in that tropical storm warning. But um, all of us are still going to feel impacts uh, from Hurricane Milton here over the next couple of days. And the storm surge threat is certainly real. Stur uh, storm surge warning now in effect for many of us here along uh, or across the first coast, not only for the beaches, but uh, especially for the intercoastal waterways, uh, those estuaries, those wetlands, and then also out and along the St. John's River. Uh, for those of you who have lived here for at least a couple of years, you certainly remember Irma and Matthew. Um, we're going to break that down a little bit as to how this maybe could compare or how it might be a little lesser with regards to storm surge as some of those storms were. Um, so we'll get into that. Here's just a quick look at what the wind field looks like right now. So, uh, or will potentially look like. So currently the wind field's pretty tight around Milton, um, but as it gradually weakens, that wind field will expand very similar to Helene. So although the eye is going to pass, uh, you know, 130 miles south of us, potentially, um, those tropical storm force wind gusts will still reach well up towards I-10, uh, Duval County and the Jacksonville area. So the sustained hurricane force winds will be much more isolated to Tampa, Sarasota, the Orlando area, uh, and then over towards Daytona Beach. Whereas here, we could see wind gusts close potentially to 60 to 70 uh, miles per hour, uh, but the sustained winds will likely be about 40 to 60. So here's a quick look at that. In that yellow shaded area, uh, sustained winds 
anywhere from 40 to 60. Now, once you start to get into that 60 uh, mile per hour wind gust range, that's really, you know, when we start talking about severe damaging winds, potentially, that's when you're going to start to uh, see trim, uh, trees coming down. That could lead to power outages, especially if those trees fall on any uh, power lines or telephone lines or anything like that. And then once you get above really that 60 mile per hour mark, you got closer to 70, 75 and greater than that. That's when that could certainly lead to not only extensive power outages, um, but also significant roof damage and property damage as well there. So uh, southern or southeastern parts of Palatka or uh, Putnam County, excuse me, really the majority of St. John's County and all of Flagler County expected to experience wind gusts in excess of 74 to if not 75 miles per hour, even here, 80 miles per hour for those areas shaded in red. So this is certainly going to be um, a significant wind threat, especially for those uh, on the southern tier of the First Coast as uh, Milton makes landfall late tomorrow night and then continuing really through a large portion of Thursday as well. Now, rainfall totals, uh, we have backed off on this a little bit. Initially, you know, 48 hours ago, we were saying about six to 12 inches of rain. We have narrowed that or brought it down just a hair, uh, especially for the Duval County and the Jacksonville area. We're talking much closer to four to eight. Um, on the high end of that, uh, you combine the high rain totals and potentially the high end of the storm surge, which we'll also get into here, that could certainly lead to some homes and businesses along the intercoastal and the river seeing some flooding. So that's when water will be coming in. But on the low end, if we only see about four inches of rain in the low end of the storm surge, um, we'll certainly see some street flooding, uh, but not nearly as widespread um, flooding damage getting into homes and businesses along some of those waterways uh, as we could maybe expect. So here's just kind of first getting into the peak storm surge. Tampa down to Sarasota and really even the Fort Myers area um, likely going to see the worst of it, potentially uh, historic. Some of these areas set records just two weeks ago when Hurricane Helene made landfall. Uh, I know Tampa, I believe, or at least some parts of old Tampa Bay set records around five, six feet. Um, they're talking 10 to 15 feet potentially. It will uh, very much depend on the exact track of where melting goes. Just a few miles to the south, um, the worst of the storm surge could be spared you know, for the Tampa area and really uh, Sarasota and the Fort Myers area could get the worst of it. So um, it will really depend where that storm eventually tracks for those folks. Now here across the first coast, really about three to five feet uh, is what we're looking at. The highest total is going to be further south, the lowest further north. So uh, for you folks up in uh, coastal southeast Georgia, we're talking Brunswick, St. Mary's down to Fernandina Beach, uh, one to two, if not three feet of storm surge. Then as you get down towards uh, Jacksonville, Duval County, and again, this is primarily for uh, those of you who live along the intercoastals, um, the Trout River, the St. John's River, that's where you could potentially see those higher storm surge totals. Not nearly as worried about you folks on the beachfront per se, uh, especially in Duval County. Um, they've done a lot of great restoration work on the beaches that should limit any beachfront storm surge. But again, intercoastal, and the rivers and intertidal areas going to be uh, at the highest risk for some of this storm surge threat. Now, again, I kind of talked about that high end. If you do happen to get, you know, four to five feet of storm surge on top of 10 to 12 inches of rain, that's really when you're going to start to see the water coming into homes and businesses along some of those areas. I think that is the high end worst case scenario. Um, I think we're leaning a little bit closer to three to four feet of storm surge. And again, about four to eight inches of rain uh, for many of us uh, across the most populated areas of the First Coast from Jacksonville down into St. Augustine and St. John's County. Um, so there's just kind of a quick look at what your storm surge is, but let's just break it down county by county here. So the hardest hit areas, Putnam, Flagler counties, worst of it, late tomorrow evening into early Thursday morning. So we're thinking of really about 10 p.m. Wednesday night to about 10 a.m. Thursday morning. That will be the worst of it. Now, really, I, I certainly urge you, um, you get home around sunset tomorrow evening, pretty much just lock it in and stay put throughout the remainder of the night tomorrow night. And then when the sun rises th um, Thursday morning, not only will we still be in the thick of it, but we're still gonna experience fairly strong winds and potential storm surge um, throughout much of the day on Thursday. But the worst of that, will be, be between about that 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. window. Uh, sustained winds 
for Putnam and Flagler counties, 60 to 70 miles per hour. Certainly could see wind gusts in an excess of 75 to 80, if not even close to 90 miles per hour in some locations. Higher rainfall totals and also, again, that higher storm surge threat there as well for some of those counties. Now, moving a little bit further north for you folks in St. Augustine and really all across St. Um, St. John's County. Similar story with regards to the time frame for the worst of the weather. Storm surge three to five feet. Sustained winds 40 to 50, even 55 miles per hour. Again, wind gusts anywhere from 70 to 80. And I certainly could expect uh, some 90 mile per hour wind gusts, not only on the beachfront, but also uh, over top of where some of those very warm waters are. So the intercoastal and out there along the St. John's River, um, that's really just gonna increase how strong some of those wind gusts could certainly be. Plus then you factor in the rainfall, potentially six to 10 inches for you folks there. Now for Jacksonville, Duval County and Clay County as well. Storm surge, two to four feet, sustained winds upwards of about 40, wind gusts up to about 60 to 65 miles per hour. So um, we'll be kind of right on that threshold of potentially uh, tropical storm force winds and conditions here across Jacksonville throughout uh, much of tomorrow evening and into early Thursday morning. Rainfall wise, I had just talked about that. Brought it down just a hair, which is good news, only about four to eight inches. And then for our friends up there in coastal southeast Georgia, Brunswick, Glen and Camden counties, storm surge a little bit lower. So uh, some better news for you folks up there, one to two feet. Winds will certainly still be quite windy, but not nearly as bad. Uh, sustained about 30 to 40 gusts, 50, maybe upwards of 60 miles per hour. Um, but all of us could potentially still, especially out along the coast um, or along the I-95 corridor, expect power outages. So hopefully, uh, you've done your storm prep and your preparations. You have the supplies and everything uh, like that that you may need uh, to not only ride out the storm, but also for the coming days after in case you do happen to lose power. Now, uh, for some of the hardest hit areas for Hurricane Helene out towards Columbia County and Lake City, um, really the best of the worst, I guess. Not going to be nearly as bad for you folks out there. Rainfall one to three inches, wind gusts uh, about 40 to 50, sustained winds closer to between about uh, 20 to 30, maybe upwards of about 35 miles per hour. And a similar story for our friends up across uh, the Waycross area and the Okie Finokies there as well. So let's just kind of show you a quick future cast of what we are currently seeing. So I'd mentioned the storm will begin to weaken. Wind shear, some dry air also getting pulled in uh, should help to gradually weaken the storm just before landfall late tomorrow evening. Still, as a major hurricane, somewhere either around Tampa or just to the south of there, really near the Sarasota area potentially, and then slowly making its way across much of central Florida, finally exiting off the coast by um, Thursday afternoon and evening, but we're still gonna see that wraparound uh, northeast winds uh, from the storm. So although the worst of it will be off the coast by Thursday evening, still gonna see uh, some windy conditions here, and we're still gonna have much more for you coming up on the First Coast News at 11 with the latest National Hurricane Center advisory, but for now, I'm meteorologist Ross Mumal. Again, we'll have much more for you. I hope you uh, stay prepared and stay safe out there uh, ahead of Hurricane Milton.